In this video, we're going to solve the problem valid anagrams on lead code. So given two strings A and B, return true if A is an anagram of B and false otherwise. So just for recap, what exactly is an anagram? It is a word or phrase that can be formed by rearranging the letters of the other word or phrase. So for example, we have car and arc. So we can rearrange the word car to get arc if there's a C over here, then there has to be a C over here. Listen and silent, basically also anagrams, and knee and key. Now, one thing to note is that if over here, if there are two E's over here, then there must be two E's on the other word. So the number of frequencies must also be the same. So one way to determine if two words are anagrams is to take them and sort the letters, just like sorting numbers from least to greatest. So after we sort them, we both get E, I, L, and S, T, and this indicates that silent and listen are anagrams. And here is the code in Python. We take in strings A and B, we lowercase them with the lower function, then we sort them, and then we compare the results. And if they are the same, return true. If not, we return false. So the runtime of this code is O, N, log N due to the sort function, and the space is all of N because the sorted function will turn the string into a list of letters. What if I tell you that there is a better and faster solution than the previous one? Well, here it is. So let's say we have feet and dfi. We then create an array of size 26, and we fill this array with zeros initially. So let's say index 0 is for A, index 1 is for B, and so on. After we created the array, we're going to go through the first word feet. So starting with f, we know that f is at index 5, so we increment by 1. How about e? Well, e is at 4, so we increment 0 to 1. e again, this becomes 2. And d, this becomes 1. Now we go through the second letter, I mean the second word. <laughs> so starting with d, d is at index 3, so we decrement, we minus now. So this becomes 0. How about e? 2 becomes 1 here. For f, 1 becomes 0, and e, 1 becomes 0. You can see that all the numbers in the array are zeros, and this indicates that both of these words are anagrams. So you might be wondering, how do we know that f is at index 5? Well, that's a very good question. So here's a way to determine. We translate f into its unicode. So the unicode of f is 102, and we can use the ORT function to do that. Then we take this number, we minus the unicode of A, which is 97, and then we get 5. So this 5 tells us the location of F inside this array. And then we increment the 0 to a 1 if we're going through the first word. How about the letter D? Well, the unicode of that is 100. We minus the unicode of A, and it's always going to be A. So we get 97, and then we get 3. So the location of D is at index 3. If we're going through the first word, we will increment the 0 to a 1. So this solution is all of n, because we don't use sorting, so it's not n log n, like last time. And we also create an array of size 26. So O of 26 is equivalent to all of 1, which is constant time. Now the first step is to determine the number of letters, and that's 26. Then we also lowercase s1 and s2. Then we check if the length of S1 is not the same as S2, then they cannot be anagrams, so we have to return false. This line of code here will generate an array of size 26 and fill this array with zeros. So now we have it in the count variable. We loop through the string 1. For each letter, we get the location of that letter using the formula I mentioned before. Then we go to the count array and we increment the content to 1. So we increment by 1. Now, again, we loop through the second string. We determine the location for each letter. Then we go to the count and we decrement by one. And at the end of the day, we loop through the count array. And if we find that one of the numbers is not zero, then we have to return false. And if we successfully loop through the count array and all the numbers in there are zeros, then we know for sure that S1 and S2 are anagrams. So we have to return true. And that's basically it for today. If you found this video helpful and enjoy it, don't forget to subscribe and also share and leave comments down below if you have any questions.